Yeah, direct misfire, talking many war games. Ben some and Spoon are taking aim. Comment, like, and subscribe today, keeping you notified and up to date. Hello champs, this is Benson from the future here. Uh, just with this episode, I just want to let you know that my voice for the recording of, I don't know, the first five to ten minutes sounds a bit echoey. It's because I didn't realise which microphone I was using at the time, and then there'll be a huge jump in quality once I do realise it. See if you can pick that point out, make that a little game for yourselves. Otherwise, um, thanks for listening, and we'll crack on. Of all the noble peoples, men are the most numerous. Men can be found everywhere, from the most verdant valley to the harshest environment. Anywhere a living can be scratched from the land. In blazing deserts, the frozen north, jungle, plain, and mountain, men dwell. They exhibit a bewildering array of outer forms and skin color, and the palette of their emotions is equally as varied. Men can be black of heart or as pure as snow. And have been known to be great elf friends, men have also been known to embrace and serve the abyss willingly. Men are anything but predictable. Hello champs and welcome once again to another one of our army breakdowns. Joining me today, as always, is Spoon and Selig as we tackle the kingdoms of men. Finally! What? How are you going, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, I jumped the gun there. I've got uh, kingdoms of men envy here. I've been waiting for this for a while. How, how long of a while? Well, it's been a good couple of months. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so how about we just get stuck into it as usual. This one might take a bit longer than normal just because the Kings of Men seem to have a lot of entries. Mm. Ah, we'll do our best. We'll try not to faff about. So, the Kingdoms of Men. These guys are neutral alignment and their army-wide special rule is Rallying Cry, so all units in the list with Inspiring Rule have the very Inspiring Rule instead. So that includes uh, Inspiring granted by other means such as Magical Artifacts, which is something to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and those who aren't sure what Very Inspiring is, it's a 9-inch bubble instead of 6-inch for Inspiring. It's pretty cool. Which is very good. So to begin with, how about we start off with the Shield Wall. These guys come in troops, regiments, and hordes. They are speed 5, melee 4, no ranged attack, defense 4, and your standard attacks of 10, 12, and 25 on the horde. The nerve is also fairly average, 9, 11 on the troop, 13, 15 on the regiment, and 20, 22 for the horde, and they cost 70 points, 100 points, and 165 points for the horde, respectively. And that's it, no special rules on top of that. So fairly stocks standard, um, they're decent. Don't mind them. Um, I'm not sure I'd be using them for much more than chaff. Sure, the horde looks like it'd stick around for a little while. Defense four makes a bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. um, magical items, I'd be reluctant because by the time you add an, add a magic item on, you can just buy a better unit. I think. Yeah, because there's so many entries in here, adding an item just kind of turns it into another one of these other entries, essentially. Would any of you guys consider the regiment for anything for these guys? 100 points, 13, 15, just as a block, but 100 points isn't that bad. That's oh, certainly not terrible. I just probably would skip it for me. Yeah. Mm, yeah, for me, it's it's sort of one of those, it's in the middle, and uh, I don't think in this particular list with so many options, being in the middle isn't a good thing. It's not cheap, and it's not effective, and it's not efficient, and I know that's not absolutely everything, but uh, I think in this case, uh, the shield wall's a little bit of a... A meh unit uh, sort of sits too far in the middle. Well, if it's not a bad choice, it's just not a great one. <laughs> yeah. You'll be alright if you take a couple. I would probably go Horde only, because yep. uh, for my regiments I'd want something a bit more hitty, but I don't yep. want to put items on them. Yep. Yeah, I guess it would depend, but there are a unit at, right at the end that you may have, if you had 20 points left over, maybe you do upgrade something to give it a bit more survivability, but um, yeah. I don't know. No, it's a yeah. no from There's me. There's going to be so many <laughs> units in the army, you can add something else onto a, a different unit. Hmm. But we'll see when we get to the actual lists. Uh, how sure. about you tell us about the Foot Guard Selic? I will. Uh, foot Guard's one of my favourite units as well. So they come in uh, troops, regiments and hordes. Uh, speed 5, melee 3, so slightly better to hit. No range, defence 5, uh, 10, 12 and 25 attacks. And the nerve slightly better than the shield wall, so that's uh, 10, 12 for the troop. 14, 16 for the regiment, and 21, 23 for the horde. 
uh, points 95, 135, and 225, all of those units. So um, you do have an option here to lower the defense down to four, just like the shield wall, and gain crushing one, which is definitely an option, particularly for the hordes, um, as they do tend to hang around. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I go against the grain here, and I actually like using these guys in troops and hordes and regiments. I love all of those options. Um, the troops tend to just hang around a little bit longer even though they are slightly deemed as overpriced. Um, but they do... Defense 5. They do... Yeah, Defense 5 makes them just hang around. You've got to actually dedicate things to kill it. And I like that. Thoughts? For the troops, if I'm using this chuff, I really don't want them to hang around. I want mm -hmm. them to die so it opens up a charge lane otherwise they're just kind of sitting there and getting in the way. I'd be picking regiment or above. Regiment horde. It's probably Same. it for me. I think I'd pick other things if I was going to use chaff, but you, I've seen you use the foot guard troop before, Salek. You used it pretty well. Yeah. It's one of the highest defense units in the army. Yeah, I think there's only uh, the knights that are defense five as well. Mm -hmm. The issue I have with the troops, and even though I use them quite uh, almost every single time, is that for five additional points, you go up to 100 points, and you could also get two of the militia as chaff and i'm sure we'll cross that off in a second but mm. all of a sudden you get two drops instead of one and if you actually have a look at the defense five against the defense three i think it is the survivability of two units dying is actually better than a defense five but um it depends how you're going to use the troops of the foot guard for me mm. yeah uh, do you so, run them with items? Um, so it depends. I do occasionally run the troops if I run them with a five-point item. The hordes, I tend to eat, depending upon how I'm running them, um, I like to put the crushing strength on them just because they hit so reliably with the three plus um, just to make sure that they can actually knock, knock a unit down. Uh, the other thing I do use is the, um, the hammer of measured force. Mm. So doesn't matter what you are particularly with how much defense six that is running around at the moment um i'm wounding you on a four plus right i can't think anything else to go on these guys um they're fairly defensive I, they're pretty expensive well they're not really expensive but it's it's a lot of um investment for a horde yep if anything i might put strength on them and also give them um let's swap out for the two-handed weapon so i've got a crushing two crushing two yeah but that's like 255 or something like that yeah, it's one of those ones that um, you sort of have to use all of your chaff to defend it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just let it do its business, because by the time everything's slightly wounded, depending upon how you structured your army, this thing can sort of come in and survive turn four, five, six, just purely by taking the hits. But if you mm. start taking wounds early on, you're pretty much cooked. All right, let's move on. Move on. Uh, on to the pike block. Uh, these guys come in regiments and hordes, speed five, melee four, defense three, uh, attacks 15 and 30, nerve at 13 slash 15 and 20 slash 22 at 135 and 225 points. Special rules, you get in snare and phalanx. What are we thinking? Nah. So, I'll talk very, very quickly here. But uh, the regiment, I just think that we're, it's exactly the same points as a foot guard. You hit one worse and your defense is two less and you get three extra attacks with a less nerve and I, I just don't but the what about the ensnare <laughs> the ensnare and phalanx like I, I just don't think it's gonna I think I'll just shoot it off before I even have to deal with it it's very specific to knights or cavalry just because yeah. of phalanx and ensnare anything else is just the kind of what's the point if you're stupid enough to engage it in close combat it'll probably stick around for a bit longer even with defense 3 um suck you by and you have defense 3 still minus 1 to hit ensnare's are they stealthy that's the yeah. yeah. But there's going to be other targets you're going to be able to shoot as well. Well, you should hope so. Are they melee three or fours? Uh, melee three. Yeah, so they're... They're also a lot more expensive. 190 for a regiment, but also have a few more attacks. Hmm. Anyway, got to weigh it up. I probably wouldn't take the pike block. I think there's better options. I don't think hmm. they're terrible. Hmm. Especially with the amount of attacks. breath weapon that's going around. I mean, if you're really desperate, just add friggin... What's it called? The fog. <laughs> <laughs> Make them stupid expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I guess uh, what's their older brother will sort of agree that the attacks there, I just don't think, normally when you've got a defense three, the attack sort of counter that and make it an okay option. I just don't think it does it in this case for the pike mm. block. But tell us about the heavy pike block. Well, strangely, being heavy, they've still got the same speed. 
Huh. So speed 5, melee 4, defense 4, so a little bit better in defense there. The attacks are the same at 1534 regiment and horde, no troops like the five flock. And we have a nerve of 14, 16, 21, 23. So just a pip higher than the standard. But the cost has gone up quite a bit. So 165 on the regiment and 270 on the horde. The extra special rule we're getting is elite. And ensnare and flex, yep. On top of the pike block, yeah. So if you give elite to the horde of pike blocks, it's what's sitting at 250? Uh, yeah, it's 25 points, isn't it, I think, from memory? Yeah, these... I don't know. Is defense 4 so much better than defense 3 when you've got a ensnare unit? Sure, elite's kind of scary, but it's 270 points for a horde as is. I would like to take a horde of foot guard instead and give them strength. Give them elite and make them 250 and they're hitting on threes with elite. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so the, same. the only way that I could see this working, you'd have to build it around it. Like, love the idea of a heavy pike block. Um, but as mm. far as I'm concerned, the only way that you could make this a, a viable option is to give them an, an additional plus one to hit. Um, so make them down to melee three. It's a very expensive unit, yes, but um, as long as you've built it around and you've constructed the rest of the army, all of a sudden you've got this 30 attack, sitting on threes, uh, re-rolling ones, and snare and phalanx. You won't be able to take that in the front easily, um, and if you do, you're not going to be chipping too many uh, wounds away on that nerve. Hmm. If they're getting charged by something with a high defense, then they're not going to be able to chew through that either. Yeah, not easily, but as I said, it's sort of, if you come back and you have like troop foot guards with crushing one or you've got some of the berserkers i guess on the flanks in troops or whatever but you'd have to construct an army all around that idea because you love the heavy pike block i just i don't know yeah. i don't think there's any other way that you would put all those points into that one unit mm, a bit too expensive for me i'd rather take a few more smaller units and give myself the option for flanks an easier option anyway did you say phalanx <laughs> No, I said flanks, oh. F-L-A and... Not He's F-L-A-K-L. lost. He's lost. What I are like you talking it. about? Spear phalanx. That's the next unit. So, they come in... Tr- oh, <laughs> right. Okay. I get you. Really <laughs> smooth <laughs> segues here. <laughs> so, what are you- anyway, continue. <laughs> so, they come in troops, regiments and hordes. Speed 5, all melee 4, no range. Defense 4 on all of these. 10, 15 and 30. Uh, attacks, nerve, 9, 11, 13, 15, 20, 22. Points... Uh, 85, 120, and 200 accordingly, and only the phalanx uh, special rule on these guys. No ensnare. No ensnare, and no elite. So so they're kind of cheaper pipe block, but slightly more defensive, but then not ensnare. Correct, and you can actually get them in troops, so that's the other bit about mm. the difference between the pipe blocks. Thoughts? Hmm. Mm. It's all very confusing for me, the pipe block heavy and sphere. I feel like I want to take the spear instead just because it doesn't cost as much. Yeah, cheaper. But they've still got the kind of the same output for damage as the pipe block, 25 points less. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about hordes here. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. So there was one of our readers, I, I forget exactly, readers, listeners, uh, actually did mention <laughs> that we do talk about really the strong armies. Just having a look at the pipe blocks, the phalanxes, and the heavy pike block is there a way that you could create a line so that somebody has to charge your your frontage there and make this work mm, uh, you can say very, no as well but. i think that's very terrain dependent too <laughs> using just these three that we've discussed well like as in heavily including them yeah because mm. it because you can kind of run around them only speed five and it's not like there's you can't funnel them into it and you can't take too many hordes because that's most of the army yep there's too many weaknesses built into that, like the speed, there's no range, inability to deal with flies very well, mm. the chaff is missing, It's it won't be a very well-rounded army if you take a couple of these or try to f- force the issue. Yeah, and I think we'll find that throughout the list, but I, I totally agree with you guys. I think that even if you did have a big long line that's almost impenetrable from the front, it's so situational. Um, mm. And it just can't deal with flies that just pop over the top. Mm-hmm. Or anything of speed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, gave it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I keep falling back. If I'm taking one of these, I'd just rather take a shield wall and put an item on them. Mm. It'd save so much more money. Yeah. So you do drop a couple of attacks, but you save 20 but points. in the grand scheme of things. 165 versus, say, 225. That's another unit right there. 
Mm. Yeah. But we've also got another human unit, Tell an us infantry about it. unit with the stick weapon, the pole arms block. So we've got pike block, heavy pike block, spear phalanx, and pole arms block. These guys, again, speed 5, melee 4, defense 3, like the pikes. Fewer attacks, so like the foot guard and shield wall, they've got 10, 12, and 25 on the troop, regiment, and horde. And the nerve is 9, 11, 13, 15, 20, 22. These guys cost 70 points for a troop, 100 for a regiment, and 165 for the horde, and they have crushing strength 1. So Crush. they're like a shield wall with two-handed weapons. With less defense. Yeah, so if you gave them two-handed weapons, if yeah. they had the option, yeah, yeah. they'd drop one defense and get crushing one. I don't mind them in a troop, to be honest. Um, mm. So, yeah, sure, it's 20 points, but 20 points for a bit of crushing, you've pretty much got to hit them or else they will actually hurt uh, when they do charge. Um, mm -hmm. So even 10, if you're math hammer, that doesn't work. So you're going to get <laughs> like, five hits, but if they're taking on something, they will chip away and do one or two wounds. And that could be the, as you know, in Kings of War, two wounds is quite a bit. Mm. Regiments and hordes, I don't mind them in. 100 points for a regiment, 12 attacks, crushing one. That's okay, that's nothing to sneeze at. rubbish. Yeah. A good filler unit, even the hordes, although it's defense 3, 20, 22 nerve, will take a bit to kind of chew through. Yep. And unless it's breath weapon, but if they're shooting that pole arms block, then they're not getting yeah, more important things. Yeah. But would, would you bother with magic items on this unit, or are you much the same no. as a shield wall? No. Not at all. I wouldn't mind using the uh, polearm block horde as a 165-point uh, kamikaze unit. Like, just chuck them out in front, just keep them charging. It's cheap front. enough to sacrifice, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just thinking, like, 25 attacks, 50% of those are hitting or so. They will stick around for two rounds of combat, and uh, I reckon they'll do a fair bit of damage and then let your actual line of uh, troops come up and clean up. Get the dice and out. Mm, yes. Could work. Um, so if I was going to use that as my option, I would actually chuck on the uh, fire oil on them. I think yeah. that would be a, not a bad option if you're going to build that. 170 points could be crushing strength 2 on uh, regen units. It could, could work. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's pretty cool. Enough said. Yep. All right. Next. Militia mob. But the militia mob, I think. Militia. Militia. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> are these guys are irregular. <laughs> Sorry, I was turning the page halfway through. <laughs> Troop, Regiment, Horde, and Legion for these guys. Uh, speed 5, melee 5, uh, no range attack. Defense 3, attacks 10, 12, 25, and 30. Uh, nerve is 8 slash 10, 12 slash 14, 19 slash 21, and 25 slash 27 at 50, 70, 115, and 170 points. Uh, no additional special rules. So we get a Legion. Hooray! <laughs> That's a lot of bodies. That's a cheap legion, yeah. 170. That's super cheap. So these guys are irregular. Yeah. But that doesn't matter because you're taking in so many regiments or and or hordes from other units. Easily fill that. Mm. This is my chuff unit. Yep. 50 points for a troop. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> cheap and ex ex bleh, expendable. Mm. That's pretty good. Their defense is low enough that they'll disappear once they get charged, clearing up the lane. Yeah, but would you take them into anything else? A l the Horde? Horde Crystal Pendant, maybe? Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> That's still, what, 150 points or thereabouts for a unit that puts out 25 attacks and explodes once it gets taken down? I like. Uh, Legion with Crushing or Legion with plus one to hit, because 25, 27 nerve is fantastic. Still going to stick around for a while. Yep. And that's still only, what, 200 some points? Yeah, only just. Or something. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Like, I have a look at all the other options, and there's like pages and pages of this stuff, and I just can't mm. seem to want to spend 200 or even 170, 115 points on, on them. I just think the troops is the ideal. You can get two of these for the same price as one. So it's good. Or I could get three hordes for a similar price to a heavy pipe block horde with an item. <laughs> yeah, so true. Multiple hordes would be fun. It's a lot of figures to paint up and put together, so it's probably not happening. <laughs> Troops more <laughs> viable. Yeah, one thing I will mention here is that in lower point games, these come into their own. Like, all of a sudden, you've got 170. I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but we've got some tournament rules that come in with 1,000 points that you can't use a 200-point yeah. unit or more. 
all of a sudden we've got a legion here with 30 attacks with 25 27 that's 170 points so you can points to spare yeah, as well points mm. to spare yeah. just chuck on a an item on that so that's where this army and all of these cheap hordes come in um and they're very hard to defeat at that that lower point cost um, i don't really care about the melee five just the number of attacks and the the cost is that just far outweighs the melee five mm. i don't think i'd ever take the regiments i just feel like they're taking up more board space than i want for two extra attacks yeah if i want to use this chuff 8 10 instead of 12 14 on the troops because i just want them to die mm. that's my thinking anyway i like your thinking yeah huh. so what else have we got well we've got the berserkers so oh, uh yes. they come in troops uh, regiments and hordes and i'd say that these are the most played unit um they're pretty much an auto we include for most armies that i've seen uh melee mm. three plus so they hit nice and well range nothing uh defense three attacks 10 15 and 30 the nerve is dash 12 dash 16 and dash 23 respectively and points 100 140 and 230 the special rules mm -hmm. there is crushing strength one right yes love these guys yeah so they Amazing. come in, they hit hard. Uh, I take these personally in troops and regiments a lot, but uh, mm -hmm. I think all three, and I don't say this often, all three options here are very viable, and they definitely have their place, particularly the dash and then the nerve. Being fearless, um, yeah. Yeah, it just makes them so valuable in this uh, this army. <laughs> yes. If you're using them as chaff as the troops, they're still quite potent melee three, getting in the flank with... Yeah, yeah regiments are also good. Fearless 16 is very, very nice. Sure, they might just disappear in a puff of fireball, but... Who cares? It's a, it's a small <laughs> unit, that's right. Yeah. And crushing one just adds insult to injury. Having that on the horde as well yeah. is so good. Mm. Don't put them there hoping to hold the opponent army up if you're trying to kind of like cover an objective because Defense 3 will just disappear and if you get double charged, then they're gone. Yep. But if you use terrain to your advantage, then... Yep. I think they're pretty good. Very much a glass hammer. Yep. Yeah. Glass can hammer? What? Glass <laughs> hammer? I think I made a term up there. <laughs> glass cannon there. Glass they'll cannon. come in, they'll do a shit ton of damage, but um, yeah, they will die just as easy. I don't think a glass, glass hammer, hammer would be very good. <laughs> it's not very efficient. So we'll refer back to the uh, spear phalanx as the glass hammer. <laughs> Move on to the next unit? I think so. Yeah. We shall... Uh, so what we're doing is we're getting some ranged fire for the army finally. So we've got a couple of choices here, but we're starting off with the bowmen. They come in troop, regiment, and horde. Speed 5, melee 5, range 5, defense 3. 8 attacks, 10 on the regiment and 20 on the horde, with a nerve of 9, 11, 13, 15, and 20, 22. Uh, the points are something that we've seen before. 75 for the troop. 100 for the regiment, and the horde is 165, and they've just got bows, so 24-inch range on these guys. Very standard stuff here. Mm -hmm. I st still think they're a pretty nifty unit, uh, using all three sizes at mm. some point. Uh, do we still have Jarab 4 wins? Is that still... Yep, yeah, it's still Yeah, that's a thing. ...viable? Maybe on the horde, if you're going to go down that path. I'm more inclined by regiment size than anything else, though. Yeah, I'd use them as objective holders and... Yep. harassment unit to take away chaff instead of trying to take a couple of pips off here and there yeah mm. so yep. i've actually paid uh all three of these i found that the hordes didn't pump out enough damage to become a threat mm -hmm. um as such so the the con i guess for that is that yes you've just spent 165 plus an item potentially to not get much damage but the the pro there was that because you're not a threat, it gets to turn five, six, and maybe seven, and they've only just charged you, and they can't pump out enough damage to knock off your nerve. Mm. So depending upon how you want to play it, and depending on the scenarios, like a ton of variables there. But for me, the two regiments was more of a threat. You could chip off one wound and really got to make sure that the rest of the army can actually do wounds, mm -hmm. which... I found out the hard way a few times. <laughs> and you put items on these guys? The Horde, I, I've i played it vanilla, um, and I've played it with previously. Plus one to hit. I've put on Elite on them. I've put on Piercing on them. I've tried everything to try and make them a viable option with the Horde. Mm -hmm. In the end, it just felt like points denial more than anything else. Mm. The Regiments, however, every time I've run them, it's pretty much been vanilla. I don't think they've got enough attacks to add an item. Yep, that's right. I 
think also um, troops, same thing. Sorry, I like fire oil on, on a unit. Yeah, five well, point. Yeah. yeah, five point items, not too bad. Yeah. Aren't you putting that on one of the uh, foot troops? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> You'll have to wait till the end. He's furiously clicking here and changing his items. <laughs> nah, I'm just I can hear that list changing now. <laughs> Trying to spend my last 70-odd 70, 70 points. 70-odd. Hey, that's a trooper bowman. There you go. <laughs> How about you tell us about the crossbowmen? Well, do. These guys come in troops, regiments, and hordes. Speed 5, melee 5, range 5, defense 3, attacks 8, 10, 20, uh, nerve 9 slash 11, 13 slash 15, and 20 slash 22, at 85, 115, and 190 points. Special rules, you got crossbows, piercing 1, and reload. So the exact same stats, just different cost. Yep. Paying for the piercing. Paying for the piercing. Reload's a bit of a bummer, but mm. hopefully you just kind of get positioning straight up, maybe one turn only having to move. That's what puts me off about these guys, the reload. I just, yeah. I can't justify paying the points for I that. I think... The piercing's nice, but reload. Yeah. Troop and regiment, same thing as with the bowmen. It's exactly the same role, they just do a bit more damage because yeah. of piercing. Mm. That That's it. <laughs> I can't really say much else. Uh, I don't mind these in a horde, personally. So you're going to pay an extra, what's that, 25 points or so. Mm. But at least then, if you give these guys range, so the, the jar of four wins... All of a sudden, you've got that additional range, a little bit more of a threat because you are actually wounding a little bit more regularly. They could actually serve a purpose, but the reload, it's a killer. Mm, you got to hope your positioning's right pretty much straight off the bat. Yeah. Agreed. All right, so like, move on to the next one. All right, so the next one here, Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. This is, I've been practicing my French all afternoon. It's the Aquabusier. So these guys here, the old school handgunners, they come in troops, regiments, and hordes. Uh, speed 5, melee 5, range 5, defense 3, attacks 8, 10, and 20. Uh, the nerve is exactly the same as the crossbows, so 9, 11, 13, 15, 20, 22. Uh, the points slightly go up, so 100, 135, and 225. These guys have rifles and piercing 2, and also the reload. I personally love this unit. Um, I don't have any handgunners, unfortunately, painted. Excellent up. pronunciation, though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Arquebusier. Arquebusier. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts, Spoonie? Uh, if you can just pronounce that for us. No, not happening. Please. <laughs> Please. We should Again, always make him say it. Not going to happen. I uh, <laughs> wouldn't run them ever, but ever? I think that comes down really? to it. Really? Why? Why? Yeah, piercing two is nice. Hitting on fives, I think, is a the big killer. If only there was an item to improve that. <laughs> hey, there is. What? Just take a war machine. <laughs> but twenty. This is more reliable than a war machine. So what's the point? Points of the item? Uh, what is it? Forty-five, isn't it? Plus uh, one hit. Thirty-five. So what unit size are you taking? Horde. So two fifty. Yeah. What's a cannon worth? Eighty-five. No, Cannons eighty. Eighty-five. 90. Oh, cannons, 85, but a siege artillery is 90. So three cannons uh, for the cost of one horde with plus one hit. Mm. I think the Arquebusier's got it. Mm -hmm. uh, nah, still not sold. <laughs> then fine, <laughs> don't buy it. <laughs> we'll, we'll take them all. Um, Jar of Four Winds is my go for the horde. Yep. Um, sit them in a corner or in a nice place where they can get a lot of um, visibility and then just pop away every round. Yeah. Have you taken these before, Sally? No, I don't, I don't actually have the models, mate. So um, uh. I've never actually used them. I've always wanted to use them. They are my choice of the ranged, purely on the impacts and how much Defence 6 is in our, our meta at the moment in Australia. Mm. So, yeah, bumping those down to, to force Defence. Um, I'm, I would sort of buck the trend a little bit and go with the plus one to hit. I like the fact that, that my brain can identify with 10 hits at uh, neg 2 Defence. That appeals to me. <laughs> you and your maths. Yeah, I can't set it off. I'm sorry, everyone. But there's no point um, giving them plus one to hit if they can't see or are in range because all the fighting's happening on the other side. Yeah, potentially. So it just so happens that there's a special character that may be able to help with that. Mm. <laughs> okay. The intrigue. I'm a man of mystery, everyone. Um, otherwise, Crystal Pendant. Okay, so <laughs> what we'll do is after the break, we'll get onto the cavalry and war machines. We will be back soon. Men were once more inclined to good than they are now. The Republic of Primavantor was the apogee of human civilization, a grand coalition of nations ruled by an elected senate and headed by the High Consul. The men of this time were long-lived and keen-minded. 
From their mountain home, the early Primavantians brought as many lands into the Republic by diplomacy as by conquest. All citizens were treated equally under her laws, no matter whether they willingly joined or their country had been defeated in war, and it flourished because of it. Every man who fought for the Primavantal did so willingly, and to protect the land they were proud to call their own. Winter's War finished the Republic, already severely weakened by the God War. The provinces north of the Dragon's Teeth Mountains were ground to clay under the ice, its rich southlands drowned by the sea. Whereas once Primavantal was a mountain kingdom overlooking fertile plains, it is now a peninsula. And we're back. Uh, we're going to get straight into the cavalry section, I believe. Uh, we'll start off with the knights, which come in troops, regiments and hordes. Speed 8, melee 3, no ranged attack, defense 5, attacks 8, 16, 32. Nerve 11, 13, 14, 16 and 21, 23 at 125, 195 and 340 points. Uh, special rules, headstrong and thunder 2. One of the few cavalry units that come in, in hordes. Mm. Yeah. Would you ever do it, though? 340 points hurts my um, sensibilities. <laughs> it's, it's not so much the points. I'm not afraid of the points as a, a past ogre player. It's the 21-23 for those points. Defense 5, 21-23? It's, it's a very big target. Because no one wants to get hit by 32 attacks with Thunderous 2. It, it is um, quite scary, too. First Mycon, I think... I went to, mm. I played an army with two units of them. What? Mm. Two horde units of knights? Yeah, yeah two Jesus. horde units of knights. Yeah, that was crazy. Go? I got rid of one, the other one I couldn't kill. Yeah. But I can't remember what the result of that game was. I'm mm. shit, so I probably lost. You blacked it out. <laughs> so, for me, personally, I like in all points uh, systems, I love the regiment. Um, and there's one special rule that I actually really like, and that's the headstrong. Um, it's something mm. that um, when you do get wavered, particularly on a, a mobile cavalry unit as such as this, particularly because it's one of the rare ones in this list, that headstrong does actually come in handy. Not that I've ever rolled a four plus, but um, yeah, it's a it's a good option. Uh, good a good amount of attacks. Uh, Thunderous two, melee three makes them very reliable. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever take troops. It would be maybe two regiments. Horde is pretty big. Sure, it's scary, but I don't think I'd build my list around it, personally. Mm. I'd stick with the uh, easier-to-deal-with regiments. Yeah, regiments uh, are good options. If you were going Horde, I'd probably put Pathfinder. That seems like the <laughs> obvious choice. Yeah, I'd still go Pathfinder on the regiment as well. Are you taking just regiment, or are you taking Horde and regiment? Because only one of them uh, gets Pathfinder. I'm only taking regiments. I wouldn't take Horde. Why not? Too big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wouldn't take a horde. It hurts my head thinking about how I would get it around terrain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you had some practice, you'd get over it. Oh, nah. So, I'll pose another question here. you already got 32 attacks, right? So, would you actually use Pathfinder on it? So, you've got so many attacks. So, even if you halve it, you're going to destroy most things. So, why not? It's just not, not the head. It's not the hindering losing the thunderous charge it's the being able to move at the double through terrain mm. so table position yeah, yeah. but it's you gotta a, get that it's right unit. and it's not just forests and stuff like you got buildings and the likes to get around i don't know it just hurts my head thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> don't want to think don't take a word <laughs> well take a word if you like i just oh, i couldn't do it <laughs> it's just it's one of those units you put in the middle of the board and away she goes yeah mm. hope for the best yeah, it's for my good. money, I'd go two regiments instead of one horde. Yeah, sure, yep. you pay a bit more for it, but easy to manage. Mm. Yep. I don't think I'd put any items on them. I'd leave them as is. Pathfinder or um, haste for me. And that yeah, that's about all I can think of that I would run on them. Crushing. If you were planning on going through terrain. No, but even yeah. still, crushing one thunderous two turns them into like a large cavalry unit. Mm, like a heavy. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've used that before on a regiment work quite well particularly um speed eight you do tend to get charged mm. so you subsequently you lose your thunderous um yeah. so just having that crushing does actually help in the counter charge and um subsequent phases so mm -hmm. yeah it does work. helps with the grind mm. yeah even elite might be all right or or vicious maybe or that one turn of both what's that oh, yeah the, the uh, item of <laughs> once per game <laughs> yeah uh, everyone knows what we're talking about, because that's what we call it. 
That's what we call it every time we do one of these casts. <laughs> <laughs> Blood of the Old King, I think that's what that's it's called. It. That is it. Yeah. All right, next up uh, we've got Mounted Scouts. Uh, cavalry unit only comes in troops. Speed 9, melee 5, range 5, defense 3, only 7 attacks, nerve 10 and 12, 100 points. Comes with bows and it is a nimble unit. And the options, and I'm just like twiddling my uh, fingers here, because you can exchange the bows to be either pistols for freezies, uh, get uh, piercing one, uh, mm -hmm. but also halves the range, or you can put it into carbines for an additional 15 points, still get the piercing one, but you also get that additional uh, range, so it goes up to range 18. Um, so that's going to make it uh, 115 points for an 18-inch range piercing one unit. Or you can have 100 points for a 12-inch piercing one unit or 100 points for a range 24 no piercing unit. Hmm. That was very comprehensive. If you put, for some reason, I don't, it, it's really dumb, but if you put Jar of the Four Winds on these guys, mm -hmm. how does it affect their pistols? Uh, does it make their pistols 24 or does it make them, what, 18? Uh, uh, it goes up to 24 because it gives an additional 12. Yeah, but uh, it says pistols... Um, but half their range. So, if you put the bow, uh, the jar on them, it takes their bows to thirty-six, and then you halve it because you go on the pistols to eighteen. That's the thing. When does no, it? Take so I think I think you actually put the pistols on, so you go from twenty-four back to twelve, and then you 12, plus yeah. another twelve. So it depends on what order they get dressed. Quiet you. <laughs> I think it's very logical the way that I've thought about it. They put their pistols on first, and then they they uh, open up the jar. We're going to get Nancy on the next cut cast here. <laughs> so thoughts on the mounted scouts I, like I love them pistols I reckon they're awesome yeah pistols I kind of like the carbines as well 115 points for a nimble thing with 18 range is pretty good don't have to get so close to them mm -hmm. you got room to escape if needs be no reload mm. as well yeah so I've used every one of these options um, use the pistols uh, even with the jar of the four winds that was good <laughs> with the twenty, <laughs> I, I just find uh, depending upon how you're actually going to use them, uh, they find very very good to slowly retreat and still chip away the one or two wounds before your big hordes hit, um, mm -hmm. and then subsequently turn uh, five, six, and potentially seven. They're good Dysons as well. Just to come in, do that one or two wounds, and then chip away. But I I use them with the carbines personally. Uh, additional range. I don't have to spend any sort of magical items on them. So mm -hmm. 115 points, piercing one, range 18. It's great with uh, nimble. Mm -hmm. Yep. No magic items otherwise. Keeps them nice and nice and cheap. Yeah, I have used um, the fire oil on them as well. That'd be good. Oh, it's five points. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. That's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the mounted sergeants. So these guys, troops and regiments, speed nine. Melee 4, defense 4, 7 attacks on the troop and 14 on the regiment, and their nerve is 10, 12, 13, 15. And they come in at 105 for the troop and 160 for the regiment. Also nimble, like the mounted scouts, but these guys are thunderous charge, so they're just throwing away their guns and hitting a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Troops are okay for chaff, very, very quick. Regiments are okay for the sneaky flank, speed 9 nimble is, is great. Yep, I uh, like them for the speed 9 nimble. Could be nasty if they can get around quick enough, assist your knights. Mm -hmm. Regiments, I'd be maybe a little reluctant just due to footprint, but that's me. But it's easier to get about with the regiment because of the um, the Nimble. pivot point. Yeah. Yeah. So where I like these, and it was only talking off air uh, with Benson, is that Nimble. Uh, I think you've really got to have, because they're going to be height two, they can actually see over and use that additional nimble to get the flank charges in. Mm. If I was going to play this, it would be a heavy troop list and then have a couple of these regiments and a couple of troops just to sort of uh, flick over the top and flick around into the flanks. Um, but I would be using at least one of the regiments with the ram. Uh, I forget what they're called. Helm of the ram? The extra yeah, thunderous them, charge. Yep, yeah, so give them two. thunderous two. All of a sudden that, that pops in. What's that? It's going to be 175 points for a regiment. Only ever get it in the in the flank. So what's that? 28 attacks. So it should be, should be pretty good to really just crush or debilitate a unit. Mm. I have now changed my mind on the regiment. <laughs> Flip-flopping. <laughs> yep. Give them haste. Speed yep, so speed so like a flying unit without fly. Oh, there you got me thinking. And, and haste is not very expensive either. 
15 points. Yeah, yeah. 15. So that's still a reasonable cost that's, for a regiment. That's, that's nasty. It, it sort of works because the whole, the rest of the other page that we sort of all, all read through for the last half hour um, is all about, it's a slow speed five, it's a, a grinding list. Um, mm. So you need units like the sergeants and the knights um, and even to some aspects the mounted scouts to chip away and the knights and the sergeants really don't chip away they just take large slabs out that allow the rest of the army to chip away and actually defeat the enemy mm. and i think getting rid of the enemy chuff is probably pretty important because if they're allowed to stay then your knight uh, your, your well, i guess knights and all of your troops are just going to get smashed yeah losing your bunch yeah mm. All right, let's move on to the charioteers. Now, I've never been a fan of chariots. These guys come in regiments and hordes, speed 8, melee 4, range 5, defense 4, attacks 8 and 16, nerve 11 slash 13 and 14 slash 16 at 115 and 175 points. Special rules, you get bows, uh, their base size is the 50 by 100 mil, and they got thunder charge 2. Hmm. Hmm. I don't mind these guys in hordes. Uh, it's a massive footprint, but it can easily be hidden behind other knights, and they can shoot, and then once the scouts or sergeant troop is dead, these guys can slam in. Yeah, I find that these guys uh, in the horde are a good defense for flying. So You can't easily get around the back of them. Yeah. They're so deep. But you can sort of sit at the back... Uh, chip away with your shooting as you've mentioned but the weakness of that i've found out of the kingdoms of men is that the flying units gets behind you and all of a sudden you're you're caught in that do i turn around and cop a rear charge from the front effectively Mm. or how do i deal with that flyer um, without additional shooting or the really uh, nimble units and i think the charioteers do actually uh fill that void that they can shoot and then charge with and actually cause a bit of harm Hmm. And looking at the um, flavor text there in the book, it does say that chariots are one of the most devastating weapons deployed by the kingdoms of men. So there I've you heard go. That. So there must be an auto include. I've it also must. heard that they only put the <laughs> finest warriors in them. Exactly. That train hard. Hmm. I'm still a naysayer on chariots, but that's, that's always poo pooing chariots. <laughs> is it? Is it always just because of the footprint size? Yeah, footprint is too, it's too big for me. <laughs> All right, I've got to take play against you and take some chariots and got to Go try uh, sway your mind on them. The elf chariots are, I think, are very versatile. I was very hesitant at the start as well. But I think the elf chariots fall into a very similar bane as this. They serve a purpose until turn five, six, seven, and then all of a sudden they can become a threat in melee. I will wait for you to play me with them, Ben. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> What's next? We got war engines. So how about we start off with the cannon, stock standard cannon. These guys, speed five, range five, defense four, one attack, nine eleven nerve at eighty five points. Uh, no melee on these ones. No, can't fight. Um, blast D six plus one, piercing four, and reload. So bleh, take a couple or don't take any. Buy a new war machine. I, th- yep. I think if we let's just pause on this. Um, I'm going to read out the Siege Artillery, because mm-hmm. that's speed 5, same speed, same range, range 5, defense 4, attacks 1, nerve, it's exactly the same, 9-11. It's a 5 additional points, so it's up to 90 points. It's blast 2d6 plus 2, so an additional plus 1. It's got indirect fire. It's got one less piercing, so piercing 3, and also got the reload. So I, I really think that we need to talk about these collectively because they're five points different, but the bonuses on Siege Artillery... So much more. ...clearly mm. outweighs the five points. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Why would you take a cannon if you... Yeah, just piercing yeah, four so, doesn't matter. Piercing three is good enough in 80 to 90% of the situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's only really, really beneficial, the piercing four over three, with defense six. The, the negative there is the indirect fire. So all of a sudden, with the cannon, you're copying absolutely all of the penalties where indirect fire doesn't get the cover saves and hmm. and whatnot so more attacks don't worry about cover for five points yeah so i'm i'm sorry for the guy that uh i know we only ever talk about the stronger options but the siege artillery in this this uh scenario is just the only way to go and this this is coming from a person that's used cannons before as well it just doesn't really work for the five point less hmm. mm-hmm 
And even if you've got cannons, there's still a piece of artillery that can be used in sieges. So just call it <laughs> yeah. siege artillery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what about the ballista? That thing is it. the same stats as the others, but it's 60 points. It's blast D3 plus 2 instead of D6, but also piercing 3 and reload. So this one doesn't have indirect fire, but it's a lot cheaper. I, I like it just because of the points value. <laughs> 60 points. That's awesome. Mm. Take three of for the price of two, two. siege ar- artillery. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have the indirect fire, as you said, but I still think that's pretty nifty. 60 points. I think it's very similar to the Basilian one from memory. Mm. Quite look, but the Basilian. Basilian, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. <laughs> Make him say the French word again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, the only reason I don't really like the Ballista is purely around... I, I like them to have two attacks, uh, not yeah. just the one. I think it's the elf one that has two. And I just think that the, the two additional attacks makes it a lot more reliable uh, with the piercing three and the blast. The elven one does have two attacks, but it's also 90 points. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bolt thrower or something, isn't it? Is that yeah. what you're thinking of? Yeah. Well, that's what this is as well, technically. Where I like this, and it, it's got nothing to do with the actual power, is I've got a, a Roman-themed army, so yeah, the ballista's very much themed to that army. Fits in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've been looking online, so if anyone's actually got uh, some ballista models in 28mm, let me know. Let Twitter know. Let our Facebook know. Let somebody let know. Let everyone know. Shout it from the roof. Let Grandma know. She'll get on to me. <laughs> yeah, no cannon. Take a couple of siege artillery if you can afford it, otherwise take a couple of ballista. Yep. All right. Move on. Yep. We've only got one <laughs> monster here. What is it? It's the Beast of War. Uh, so, speed 7, melee 4, range dash, uh, defense 5, 12 attacks, nerve is mm-hmm. 15, 17, for a whopping 210 points. It is on a chariot base, so the 50 by 100. It's got brutal, it's got crushing strength 2, and it's got thunderous 2. Uh, you can also mount a light blister on it for an additional 10 points. It's got a range of 36, range 5+, plus, 2 attacks, blast D3, with a pissing 2. Thoughts? Concerns? Only take the ballista if you have 10 points spare and you don't want to take anything else. <laughs> yep. Because you know, by the time you yeah. move, you're hitting on sixes. <laughs> That's it. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that Beast of War mounted light ballista has won me a game before. Wow. Yep. So all the maneuvering and um, rolling from other units had nothing to do with it. It was purely this light ballista. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so two attacks, rolled two sixes to hit, rolled an additional two sixes on the blast, then took off a Vampire Lord. Or whatever they are, vampire. I was so chuffed. That's that's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm sure that happens all the time. Two lots of had it uh, taken sixes. any damage previously? Yeah. It, okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, there was a blister that did it. Yeah. But otherwise, this is just like a a giant with a fancy name. Yeah, I think mm. giants are cheaper, aren't they? Yeah, it's about two hundred. All the giants are around the two hundred mark. Mm. So my concern here is, uh, I just can't justify the points. I've used it a lot. And the speed 7, I find, is, is pretty good because it's a monster. You can give it additional movement if you need it. But I think my issue yeah. here is the base size. Mm. Unlike a giant, you can't just pivot and uh, avoid close enemy because that, that 100 mil is going to swing out wide and it can stop you half the time. Whereas mm. a giant, you can just swing on the spot and hit something. There you go. How are you giving it extra movement, Salik? You can't. You can't? No, no. You can't. It's a monster. <laughs> yeah. But 12 attacks is nice, better than the uh, the giant's random amount. Yeah, D6 plus 6. But it doesn't have the same sort of nerve. Isn't a giant 17, 19? Yeah, most of them are around that. Yeah. So I've used this a fair bit as my steam tank, and uh, I just want it dies so easy. It does have that one charge that it's devastating, like crushing 4, 12 attacks, brutal. But um, if it... As soon as it gets counterattacked, it just folds. And for 210 points, I find that um, a larger unit uh, with two, effectively two uh, melee phases is more efficient than this. Mm. Mm. I wonder if psychology goes into it as well, because it's a monster. It is a target. Yeah, bigger target. Mm. You can't really hide it. <laughs> nah, nah. I feel like I'd want to take two, but that's 420 points. It's a big a chunk out of your monsters. list. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll take one just because I'd like to have a monster in my list. Hmm. Otherwise, it's just men. Men and horses. <laughs> <laughs> Where they do come in handy is with... They're one of the only things in this list, apart from uh, the siege artillery and the cannon, that can take defense six and actually threaten it. So, hmm. yeah, 
speed seven, you charge in against uh, an elemental, for example, and all of a sudden you've got 12 attacks, hitting on fours uh, with crushing four. If you manage to get that flank, anything's dying. Yeah, I just, I don't know whether I've used it incorrectly, but I've never been able to get the flank. People are very conscious of it. Hmm. Or I'm crap. Maybe you need to take a smaller <laughs> miniature. <laughs> <laughs> But otherwise, that's all that. Uh, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we'll get into the characters. Back soon. The memory of this noble state lives on in Basilea, the largest and most powerful of today's nations. The successor kingdoms are descended from Primavanto also, but the similarity to Basilea ends there. There are as many as a hundred of these small statelets, ranging from independent cities to large dukedoms and the genuine kingdom of Valentica. These small lands are in a constant state of rivalry. War between them is not uncommon. As a result of this, the city-states are vital places, breeding brave men who range far in their ships. In other places, men live in conditions ranging from great culture to orcish barbarism, and everywhere in between. Dark Ophidia is the home of vile sorcery. To the far north, hordes of horsemen fight over the herds of mammoth and bison with goblins. On the icy seashores beyond the bitter islands, reavers set sail in longships, raiding and trading as far south as Elvenholm and Bathaleo. Upon the contested plain of Alavikia, new lands reclaimed from the ice's retreat are founded. Caravans of camels crisscross the deserts in the south between desert oases and dry cities, bringing exotic wares from cultures so far afield what is known of them by the nations around the infancy is more legend than fact. And we're back and we're just about to cover off the heroes. Uh, so we're just going to jump straight into it and we'll jump into the general, uh, who is speed 5, melee 3, no range, defense 5 for large attacks, and nerve is 12, 14 but for 100 points. He comes with crushing strength 1, the individual rule, and he is obviously very inspiring. Mm. He comes ooh, uh, He comes with the options of being on a horse, speed 8 for 20 points. Obviously he changes the cab there, or he can jump on a winged horse, or a pegasus as you fancy people call it, <laughs> technical. for uh, an increase of speed 10 and gains the flying, but he does lose the individual special rule. Uh, that's 50 points, and it also changes him to large cav. So effectively you can chuck him on a horsey, or you can chuck him on a pegasus. Obviously the points all change there. Thoughts on the general on a pegasus? Well, like his namesake, I don't think he's very specific. <laughs> I don't know about the Pegasus. Sure fly is nice. Losing the individual rule means he's going to get hit easier by shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can get flanks off, but it goes from four to eight attacks, crushing one, which could help out in a multi-charge, but I don't know about him. I feel like I'd just go on a horse if I'm taking mounted units, just to inspire them and help out a bit. I don't think I need fly. Oh, I think he's alright on the Pegasus. Yeah, he's Horsehole. okay. I'm not saying he's bad, but... Yeah. He's all right. 150. Yeah, 150. Um, he's not overly expensive for what he's going to do. You really are aiming for those flanks of years to make it worth his while, I suppose. I'm just worried about range shooting because he's still only 12, 14, and then he's easier to see because he's height three he's, and no yeah. individual. Mm. No, so I understand that. where I play this chap is only on a peg with really, really low points. What I've found is that shooting isn't as efficient in low point games. I just yeah. don't think you yep. can actually have a, a really, really, really shooty army in 1,000 <laughs> points. That was three reallys for everyone at home. Really, um, really. Really, really, really. So for me, chuck him on a peg, but only to have that versatile 9-inch bubble. He's not super... He's not a massive threat with his four attacks, even on a peg, but he can do a job, like occasionally tying up one of those shooting units, and he will take him off. But, yeah, he's, he's not a, a power option. Hmm. hmm. I go horse. I wouldn't give him any items. Maybe breath. But I think his nerve's a bit too low. It just it scares me. Mm. How about we compare him to the general on winged beast? Let's do that. So he's got three mounts, essentially. He's got a horse, yeah. he's got a pegasus, and then he's got a, just a winged, winged beast. beast. <laughs> yeah, a winged beast, which is speed 10, melee 3, defense 5, 6 attacks. So there's got a bit of an upgrade there. Nerve 14 slash 16 at 190 points. Goes up to crushing 2. Fly, very inspiring. I don't mind him. For 90 points, we're getting two more attack, a bump, a, a good bump in the nerve, mm -hmm. extra crushing as well. Yep. Yep. Uh, so Using the same it's, way. 
just I'll pause there because it's not actually a 90 point upgrade it's actually a 40 point upgrade uh, if you're going to from correct the uh, Pegasus. Pegasus because you, yeah. you're not including the fly in that case mm. yeah mm-hmm. I love this guy I've worked out a bit of a combo that I'm really really chuffed about um, <laughs> that I'll talk about when we talk about our armies or a spoon will magically have it in his <laughs> yeah the only issue I do have here is attack six is still pretty low for a, a combat um monster flying mm. unit he's no dragon he's no. no dragon yeah definitely not he's also 100 points less than a dragon or a bit bit more than 100 points yes mm. that is true so what items do you put on him uh, in my list i haven't put anything on him <laughs> he's naked naked letting it all hang what? out yeah what are you putting on him no well, there's a few options that i've actually tried the big one that i've put on him obviously is the uh, blood of the old king i actually found that in a couple of tournaments uh, to be super efficient mm-hmm. so mm. why is because he's one of the only mobile units in my entire army and he generally only gets one amazing charge off so that's that's usually a rear and he will actually just take a unit off or severely cripple it in and one turn so yep. of uh, charged i forget the beerman or so in the rear 18 attacks so i think i hit with 17 of them and that unit was just taken off and it just created a giant hole in their list. So uh, Hmm. for me, that's um, one of those ones that you can always get him into a position where he's either sharing the the nine inch bubble or he can actually get a flank or a rear to change the, change the game. And I think that's what the general's all about. Yep. Right. I would like to give him breath weapon, just turn him into a a dragon. A a mini dragon. I've used the uh, general on a Pegasus with the breath weapon. Similar thing. Yeah. Well, I found it was just a little bit cheaper, um, but... Well, it is, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not good with numbers. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I found that that was, with these four attacks as a general on a peg, that was more useful rather than potentially six. I know it's only two extra yeah. attacks, but... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, happy? Finished? Yeah. Move Ecstatic. On. Let's, yeah, let's move on. Let's get on to the hero. Uh, speed five, melee three, no ranged attack, defense five... Three attacks, nerve 10 slash 12 at 50 points, yep. is crushing one and individual. You can also put him on a horsey, go to speed 8 for 15 points. Uh, on a pegasus, uh, which increases speed to 10, uh, you gain fly but lose individual. Or plus 40 points. Um, oh, hang on a tick. 40 points and he goes to hero large cav. Oh, that's for, right. Okay. Uh, going all over the place. All right. So plenty right. for 15 points or peg for 40. Yep. Just not to do with anything with the stats, I think hero has to be the lamest name because all of these guys that we're talking about are heroes, but this is hero hero. This is hero. 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 <laughs> In- <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, it seems like he got short end of the stick in terms of the names. I mean, even general seems more specific than hero. <laughs> hero. Hero who is a hero. <laughs> hmm. But the other guys are heroes, but we just don't call them heroes. <laughs> so maybe this is the only guy who gets recognition. I don't know. Um, I put this guy on a peg, maybe give him speed and make him a, a torpedo and take out um, war machines and Flies. individuals and whatnot. Quick yeah. assassin sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. In my opinion, never put him on a horse. I don't, I don't think that it works. The peg, I think, is the only way that I'd ever run him. He doesn't have inspiring at all. So Ex- That's another thing. He's a hero who doesn't inspire people. He is a lame hero. Do you need a minute, mate? Are you are you okay? Oh, I just <laughs> I feel the brand building up. I gotta stop it. <laughs> yeah, his nerve is very low as well, ten twelve. But he's only fifty points. But I don't know. He's not. I feel like I would take enough. this guy just to spite Mantic. Yeah, here's my hero, who's a hero who doesn't inspire. He's not a very good hero, <laughs> but he's a hero. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets my goat. Gears anyway. grinding here all the time. <laughs> I'll, send my piece, so I'll th- leave it at that. I think we're going to move on uh, rapidly <laughs> before uh, we hear some breaking in the background there. Uh. So we'll talk about uh, an army standard bearer that's a hero, not the hero that we've already talked about. <laughs> so that, it's uh, this guy's a super, in- a very inspiring <laughs> hero who isn't here. Speed hero. five, shush. Uh, speed five, <laughs> melee five, range uh, dash, defense four, one attack. Uh, nerve is 9-11 uh, and 50 points as well as the hero. Special is individual and very 9-inch inspiring. So his options, he can come on a horsey as well. Bumps him up to speed 9 for 15 points. 
And he obviously turns into Cav. He's an auto include for me. Nine inch bubble, fifty, 50 points. points. Bloody hell! Yeah. Hashtag yes. Give him the Griffin thing Griffin. for the rally. Yeah. Let's make sure he doesn't die. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've used him as running. well with the hammer, um, as well. Just a throwy hammer, just in case it ever comes in. If you got the I was points, say the one of measured force. But no. yeah. No, no. <laughs> Make sure his one attack is wounding on a four. One attack is a 50 50. Um, or grenades. I like me grenades. I'm going to get Ben going again. Shut Uh-oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's also note that if you're an army standard bearer, you get a better better horse than the hero. He is a speed nine horse. <laughs> <laughs> that crushing strength is very heavy. It's just the same cost. <laughs> a faster horse. And this guy's <laughs> carrying a bloody flag, so he's got the drag, but it's faster. I don't know. <laughs> can kick that horse into into the next gear. Jeez. <laughs> nah, it's he's a good large to just banner. sit behind all of your big hordes with a nine-inch bubble. Yep. Why yep. doesn't the standard hero have, like, a condition where it's just normal <laughs> inspiring and not very I inspiring? We, I think we need to move on to the wizard or else <laughs> we're going to get a two-hour rant here. Oh, my God. All right, go on. <laughs> this guy better not be inspiring. I think it's Stupid up to you, wizard. Benson. Yeah, uh, wizard. So wizard the wizard's Oz. a hero. But at <laughs> least he's not an inspiring hero. He can be. He can cast spells, but that's not inspiring. So wizard, speed five, melee four, defense four, one attack, nerve of ten, twelve, and fifty points. So another fifty point hero. Lots of cheap heroes. The five or six an individual is what this wizard has. But he's got a lot of options. Lightning bolt three for twenty five points, or if you don't want the firewall, swap it out for free, which I think is. Pretty cool. Uh, Windblast, 5 for 30 points. Bane Chant, 2 for 15. Heal, 2 for 10 points. I think it's a bit wasted there. Um, he also gets a better horse than the Hero Hero <laughs> with a Speed 9 for 15 points. And he has the option of jumping on a peg because why not? Army Standard can't take one. Wizard can take one. And it is only, only 25 points for this peg. So it's a lamer peg than the other one, <laughs> but cheaper. <laughs> so P10 loses individual hero large cab. Why is this a cheaper Pegasus? What makes uh, this it's, Pegasus? It's not only cheaper? just like one or two points. It's 25 points cheaper. It's a bit like you get a spell and Pegasus for the same as a standard Pegasus. It's ridiculous. Somebody should say something. <laughs> Let it go. Pete. Someone should, but it won't happen. They won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where I have a bit of an issue. The Boots of Levitation are 30 points. This is where you have an issue. Not with the hero who doesn't inspire, but this guy. Okay. I've never even (laughs) looked at the hero as a a valid choice, to be honest, because of his name. But that uh, Pegasus for 25 points is five points cheaper than the Boots of Levitation. Now, I know that you still get a lot of other options with the individual rule, but still, when points are tight for a 50-point unit, Hmm. bad. So what options options do you take? I like the swapping out of the Lightning Bolt. 10 points more. For an extra speed and fly. Sure you lose it individual. Uh, I'll probably keep him on a horse. Speed nine's good enough. You don't want him sticking his head over the top of other knights so he can get shot off. Yeah, mm. depends if you take the other spells that have sort of come in in the, the more recent additions. Mm. Weakness or blood boil or... Yeah, those ones with the short... What's the... Uh, uh, the sh- Soul drain. Short, soul drain, yeah. I don't think you get as much value out of that because we don't have any high defense things that need healing that much. I don't think. What if you had a horde of... Foot guard. Foot guard. Mm. <laughs> their, their move is really high, and you probably only get a couple of damage back. And Soul Train's like, what, 30 points? Yeah. No, thanks. No? No. I'm usually swapping Fireball out for Lightning Bolt, just because of the extra range. Yep. And the Take tasing. a couple of pips. Yep. Wind Blasts. I'm yet to use that spell I feel like they've got to drop the points on Wind Blast, just so more people can take it. Mm. Yeah. I think multiple wind blasts is in the right scenario. It's very, very situational for a spell. I've never seen it. You've never seen it? Never seen it. I think that's a lie. I reckon you've seen it. I tell a lie not. I've never seen anyone take multiple wind blasts. I will be when my Empire of Dust are done. Yeah, I was going to say, don't Empire of Dust all of the and when's that happen? archers have it? Hurry the, up. Um, <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> and save Guardians. Yeah, one day. I'm busy painting other stuff. All right. I'm going to move on because I all think right. we talked about this uh, wizard hero that's not a hero. <laughs> so the what do they call it it's the legendary no living legend it's the living legend the captain 
the captain. <laughs> the fabulous captain. name. This guy they is call a him, legend. They <laughs> call the him captain. the captain. Uh, you know so the he's got speed five, no <laughs> three, range dash, uh, defense five. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, three attacks. He's got a nerve of 11 and 13. Points 150. He comes with crushing strength one. He's got the individual rule and very inspiring. But most importantly, he's got a special rule called the master tactician hmm. uh, his options come with he can be put on a horsey that's speed eight just like uh, the hero and that's for 20 points so the master tactician his special rule is uh, what i refer to as the uh, kingdoms of men shenanigans so that's where <laughs> you can actually roll a d6 or d3 and you can redeploy that many units after you've finished deployment but before vanguards so really effectively cool. you can deploy out your all of your units there so particularly lure out uh, some of their big units and after everyone's finished you can roll a d3 and then move all of your shooting over to the other side or mm. maybe do the old switcheroo with uh, your shooting and your heavy knights to actually counter some of their their movements the downside is that it is 150 points for a bit of a gamble you could roll a one or a two and only be able to move one unit out so yeah. Um, it's I've used it in a big tournament over in uh, Canberra at CanCon, and um, this one here was very fickle. So you can try and base your your gameplay around it, but it'll screw you every time. If you take your horde of Arcbuthiers <laughs> with a jar of four winds, even if you roll a one, just put that where you need it. Yeah, you've got to pretty much play as if you're going to get a one, and yeah. I think that's that's sort of where. I was falling over is that I was always hoping that I'd get two so I can do a switcheroo so move mm. one and move it over to the other the issue there is that when it, the dice don't like you you end up just keeping it as it was pretty much why doesn't this guy have a proper name what do he's you mean? a lower rank than a general but he's a legend oh the captain why is all about he the captain? he's a master tactician <laughs> whose name is the captain <laughs> And I, There's so I, many issues with the name conventions of this particular Can you army. just spend uh, one minute there, Benson, take a deep breath, and then read out his, uh, his fluff there? Yeah, it's quite a, quite a big chunk of it's flavor right, text we've got here. The captain is the most seasoned of mercenary leaders. His services are expensive, but worth every copper coin. Go on. That's it. Oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Do you reckon they just got to the end of this book and just went, fucking hell, look at the wizard. These lonesome, mysterious figures are a rare and powerful addition to any human army. Yes. <laughs> they need to nice. do something about that. I, I like, <laughs> I like flavor text. <laughs> this, this, we've got Hero Hero, who's just a hero, who doesn't inspire. Captain. Then we've got the captain, who is lower rank than a general, but he's a legend and a master tactician with, <laughs> with no flavor. Oh, I love it. Otherwise, I'd take this guy. I love the randomness of the Master Tactician special rule. I like that, uh, that quirkiness and pull one over no, your, your opponent before the game begins. Yeah, once again, having played it at a tournament, a big tournament, it was extremely fun to watch people sort of ruin their plans when you roll that five or six and then move your hot, well, three mm. massive big units away from their strong units and then watching them try and get all the way across through all the terrain to actually make a game of it while you're crushing one half of the board is, is fun for me, not for them. If I managed to pull that off, then I'd be happy for the rest of the game. I wouldn't care about the result. That's what I live for. That's why I <laughs> played Goblins at the end with Skarsnick, just because of that randomness. Yeah. When when it does work one in every six or seven games, it was fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> but other than that, that is the all, the, all the units in the Kingdoms of Men. Uh, mm. They are neutral, so they can ally in anyone. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll take another break and then we'll come back with our thoughts on allies and some example lists. Back soon. Excellent. Naturally, man's method of war differs from place to place. The successor kingdoms are the homes of engineers and wizard scholars, and their armies reflect this. Gunpowder weapons such as cannon and primitive handguns are common there. Basileo also possesses this technology, but relies more on divine magic and armored horsemen to win its wars backed up by griffins and the Elohai. All the kingdoms born from Primavantor's ruins favor blocks of pikemen, a weapon used for millennia. The Ophidians can draw upon a wide range of troops across their empire, including desert horsemen, fierce tribal warriors from the Green South, and all manner of light troops suited for their harsh land, 
supported by heavy infantry and horse drawn from the Ophidian cities. The Ophidians also enslave desert spirits to fight for them and make use of legions of undead skeletons. The northern tribes are less disciplined but formidable nonetheless. Whether step rider or sea raider, all are raised as warriors from childhood and they are consequently skilled individual fighters. Welcome back. We're in the tail end of the review. Next, we're going to discuss allies and what would be viable for the kingdoms of men. Do we have any standouts, anything that just kind of jumps out at you? Ogres would be one. They're Why's neutral, that? aren't they? Or are they evil? No, they're neutral. Uh, ogres are neutral, but kingdoms of men can take anything. Okay, so from my point of view, if you have a look through the whole list, um, the one thing that will stick out like a sore thumb is that you just don't have a flying uh, option that does damage. Um, so I actually like uh, the elves, if you can sort of jump in with those guys, um, mm -hmm. with the, the Dracon Riders mm -hmm. um, and the Alohi, obviously, that everyone takes. It's pretty vanilla. But, um, yeah, I think Dracon Riders, just giving you that little bit of flying ability to threat in the flanks and the uh, rears, I think that's valuable. Mm-hmm. I like the ogres for the um, for replacements for your foot troops. I just find the variety from um, so just the standard warriors rather bland. Yeah, like use ogres to replace them, sort of thing. As okay, well. so they're just swapping out roles just to make the army look a bit different. Yeah, hmm. a bit different. Yeah, the warriors just uh, my I've I played that at uh, CanCon. Hmm. Their nerve is a little low for the points. Two hundred fifteen seventeen. Defense yeah. 5? Yeah. I, I used the... I think I used the Legion. I think they're 21, 23. 22, 24. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a little low for the points that I was spending on it. That's how I felt anyway. Mm. I kind of feel like I'd want to take maybe Dwarves or something, get a Stone Priest with some Elementals going. Ooh. Because then that also helps out with the enemy flyers because of the... Uh, Pivot and shamble. Mm -hmm. Shamble, shamble, shamble. So if you take one stove priest with a horde of earth elementals and a greater earth elemental, that's well under for your allotment of allies and puts some much needed defense six and flyer defense, mm -hmm. I feel. The other one there that you could actually be bumping in is any sort of monsters. I'm not going to name list here, but I think that the monsters that we have um, in the Kingdoms of Men list is probably subpar. Well, you've only got one monster in the Kingdoms of Men list. Yeah, 100% of the options are subpar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what's got a lot of monsters? Uh, Night Stalkers, I'm pretty sure, has a lot of monsters. Same with Varangar, if I recall. Varangar. Varangar. Mm. Although, that would be a bit odd seeing Night Stalkers allied with the Kingdoms of Men. You have to write a decent story for me to believe that one. <laughs> Not just Hero Hero. Not just Hero Hero. Captain <laughs> Hero. It's the captain. Thank you very the much. The captain, sorry. Can't let it go. You can't. I will never <laughs> let it go. Unless they change it. And then I'll win. Screamer seems... Oh, that's, that's just a Lightning Bolt 5 battery. Just doesn't fit with me, that ally. As you said, you can need a bloody good story for that one. Yeah. <laughs> But if you're taking monsters, then you've got to take a unit to unlock the, um, what's it? And we don't need more infantry. Mm -hmm. That's for dang sure. Uh, what have we got in Varangar? Varangar seems like a decent fit. You can take some large cav. There's no large cav in the Kingdoms of Men list, and you can take a monster to go with it. Go, um, Brotherhood. Brotherhood? Poor Brotherhood. Uh, Forsaken? Aren't they the flying Pegasus Knights or something? Yeah, they're the flying fellas with, um... Thunderous 2. And then you've got the monsters in that list if you wanted to go down that path. I don't know how expensive they are. I think they're similar to giants, aren't they? Yeah, well, they've only got a water elemental, which is 190, and then their Forsaken Beast is 125 base, but then you pay for the upgrades. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think the other one that is a pretty easy option is the herd. Um, I think you could tie in some tribal warriors and then uh, obviously some giant eagles or whatever you need mm. pretty easily, and the points are quite low. Um, so that, that would work as well. And I'm not sure about Ratkin. They're also sort of falling that cheap. cheap yeah, sort of it's just regiments. too many drops there. Yeah. I find their neutral setting rather weird. Neutral? Why, you think they should be good? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I haven't met many good humans. But the hearts of men are easily swayed. <laughs> like the heroes? Hero, hero. 
Well, he's not very inspiring. He's not even standard inspiring, is he? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's move on. What else have we got on our list here? We should talk about lists. Lists. Well, I'll jump in first because I know that Spooner is very confident on his list. Super keen. Yep. So, just as a disclaimer, my lists are generally a little bit weird, but I've played these a little bit. So, I've actually jumped in with two troops of foot guard, one with the mace of crushing and one with the blade of slashing. You do so like your foot guard. I, and, and I love magic items as well. <laughs> so, that, that puts both of those troops at 100 points. So, if that is quite expensive for a chaff unit, mm. um, but I use these uh, a bit more of a multi-purpose unit. You can either use it as a chaff if required, but it generally won't die unless it's getting charged heavily. So, yeah, a bit of a, a unique sort of troop. The next one that I've got is also a foot guard, but it's a horde. So that's 25 attacks, and I use the hammer of measured force on these guys. So that's going to be 25 attacks, hitting on threes, always wounding on fours. Makes them pretty good against our meta at the moment, which has got a lot of defense six. Then I jump in with the genuine chaff, which is just a troop of militia. Mm -hmm. uh, then I jump in with two regiments of berserkers. So these are the, once again, the auto includes. One of them with the healing brew as well, just to make sure that their nerve can stay alive. The knights, I've got two regiments. Uh, one of these is more of the offensive option, so that's with the caterpillar, so they can get through everything. And the other one is used a little bit more conservatively, but I've given it nimble, so the wine of the elven kin. So that one here, obviously, I'll hold back a little bit and make sure that it gets the flakes. Next one is two troops of mounted scouts, both with carbines. So they're used just purely to mop up uh, at the end. Yep. And then I've got two siege artilleries. Once again, take one or... Never take one, but always take two. Um, so that one has purely to weaken up uh, the front ranks. Then I've got the General on a Winged Beast with the Blood of the Old Kin, purely for those flanks and rears. I've got the Army Standard Bearer, Vanilla. And then I've got the Wizard with Bane Chant and Weakness. And that's pretty much it for me. Mm -hmm. That's 2,000 two square. Good job on getting the exact points. Thank Doesn't you, sir. Doesn't sound like anything's wasted there. Yeah, I've played with these guys enough. I think you could probably spend the, the troop foot guard a lot better. So that's obviously 200 points. You could probably spend a little bit better purely by leveraging the militia hordes. You could also probably use the sergeant, mounted sergeants instead of the knights a little bit better to save a couple of points. I feel like, he, yeah, for that wizard at the end there, he should have the amulet of the fire heart. Mm. For the double spell. Yeah, so... For one turn. Bane Chan on one and weakness on the enemy they're about to charge or have charged. Yeah, I've, mm. I've used weakness before. I find that it's probably not... Because they're used in different phases and they're almost different, I guess, uh, times that you need them. Mm. So, yeah, I agree that there is going to be uh, circumstances inside a game that you would need to use both. But um, I find that you're generally hiding in behind and you're Bane Chaning or you're getting out wide and trying to f i guess flank with the weakness and they can't really do too much against uh particularly uh the foot guard with a defense five yeah and my two units of knights with defense five so effectively what i'm trying to do is bump them up to defense six with the weakness which i think's pretty pivotal from the games that i've played mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh oh sorry the armory army standard bearer also has the banner of the griffin i forgot that okay which seems pretty fitting yeah all right, so I'll do mine, which has no foot guard. So we're going to start off with a sphere phalanx. He's just a regiment of that naked, because why not? Then I've got three troops of militia mob and a horde of militia. The troops are obviously the chaff there, 50 points each, why not? And the horde is very threatening. It's only 115 points, but it's got some presence on the board. I don't think anyone will ignore that, so hooray me. Uh, then I've got a regiment and a horde of berserkers. The Horde's got a healing brew because of five points. Similar to the Militia Mob, it's there for um, being a, a threat. It might confuse the enemy as to what to do because it's still a lot of attacks coming from all three there. But then they've got to get through the Militia Mob. But I need some ranged um, attacks here, which is why I've got the Arquebus, yes. And they've got the Jar of Four Winds because things we've discussed. Is that a regiment? A Horde. A horde. Yeah. Uh, mounted Scouts. Just a troop of them, and they've got carbines. They're the harassment unit, try and get rid of the opponent's chaff. And mounted sergeants, just because I like the idea of nimble knights that can 
hopefully get flanks 28 attacks and a flanks pretty good thunderous charge one. Mm. Siege artillery and ballista. I went with one of each because of points. <laughs> I did have two siege <laughs> artillery, but I was yep. over, so I had to downgrade one. And then I've got a general. He is on a horse. I've given him the flying hammer for something to do. Uh, army standard with banner of the griffin. Then two wizards. Both have bane chat. And I've swapped lightning bolt for the fireball. I swapped fireball for lightning bolt. I swapped yeah. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them has an inspiring talisman. And just to remember inspiring talisman will give very inspiring for this army Ooh. and then i've just thrown in a beast of war because like i said before i can't just have an army of men and then men on horses i needed something that had a bit of fantasy flavor hence the beast of war and that's oh, dead on 2000 yeah that that beast of war will actually help you out with those defense six just kamikaze it in and it'll do a mm. job so I, i've got a lot of a lot of drops there it's will take a bit to kind of chew through uh, I think I've got enough to deal with high defense. I've got um, some decent shooting, and I've got Bane Shan on both wizards. So I think I'd be okay there. And lots of regiments and hordes for objectives. Hmm. So I'm very keen to uh, hear Spoon's list here, because I know yeah. that he spent the last week working on it. So Save the best um, till last. Yes. 20 minutes before the show. Hey, hey. Very prepared. Don't talk it down, mate. 20 minutes before last show. <laughs> Word of warning, this could be a really terrible list. Uh -huh. We're going to start it off with a bag. Uh-oh. Foot guard, horde, crystal pendant. Crystal pendant? Well, that is starting off with a yeah, bag. Yeah, that's good. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's pretty out there. It's a very expensive bomb. <laughs> but you've got to do something about it, though. It's not easy to shoot off with Defense 5. Yeah, I didn't switch the weapon for crushing one, because I've got a wizard, but we'll talk about that a bit later. I've got... Uh, troop of berserkers for chaff and a regiment of berserkers with blade of slashing which i wish i could trade in now for, for what? something else Ooh. healing brew is at five points should have put that on my winged beast it's not but too anyway. late yeah <laughs> two regiments of bowmen one with fire oil just for those pesky half breeds and whatnot mm -hmm. regiment of knights caterpillar potion uh mounted scouts i went pistols uh, as I was planning to use them for chaff rather than run away mm. at some point. Then I would, that's, this is, this doesn't happen very often. I don't often take three of one thing, but I've taken three ballistas. <laughs> the power gamer comes out. Yep. Win at all costs, guys. This is the filthiest Followed list. by <laughs> the general on a winged beast. And he's naked. Naked. I uh, wish I had the healing brew on him, but oh well. <laughs> Armour standard bearer. What? I think we, we'll, split, we'll put the, uh, the healing brute on him now anyway because yeah. i like the idea of this naked general flying about on his wing beast and drinking this <laughs> this brew <laughs> army standard bearer banner of the griffin pretty yeah. stock standard choice there wizard switched out the fireball for lightning bane chant two with weakness uh probably could have saved the 20 points here for the inspiring talisman because i think my army standard bearer will cover it and then i have some allies I took a low high horde, mm -hmm. and I took some sisterhood panther lances for an extra bit of chaff or a speedy threat. Mm. That's my list, and I'm done. I d actually don't mind the crystal pendant foot guard. I think that's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's a decent setup. So, yeah. after talking through it all, there's probably only one or two changes that I'd actually make in my list now. I think mm. I'd probably take out the chaff foot guard that I've got and replace it with mounted sergeants. It's an additional temple, uh, additional five points from the, the items that I've got. Mm. If I run troops vanilla, they'll serve a more versatile role, I guess, in my list. Mm. And I have no idea where I'm going to get those models, but I think I'm going to have to find them. <laughs> <laughs> just Why Sisterhood Panther Lancers? Why not just say mounted sergeants with an item? Just because I wanted another unit from the allied force. Okay. You just didn't want to use kingdoms of men. Yeah, that too. And I get the inspiring from the Alohi too if they're nearby. But you've got inspiring in kingdoms of men. Better already. inspiring. But I wanted to run allies. It's super inspiring. All right. Just saying. Fine choice. Except the hero. Sorry, I, I just don't... I don't, really don't find Kingdom of Men very appealing. That's just me, though. Wow. You're a big human fan, Sally. I love humans. Sorry. I was just thinking about... Uh, <laughs> I'm in love with humans as well. Buying a Blood Bowl human <laughs> army. I was like, oh. <laughs> They're just not fantasy fun, enough for me. Yeah. And there's... And the actual Kingdoms of Men have some really dumb naming of things. What? 
<laughs> can you just give me one example? <laughs> I can. I can give you more than one, but I shan't. <laughs> All right. How about because it's a fairly, uh, I won't say generic, but well populated area, the uh, Kingdoms of Men in terms of miniatures, what's out there for people? If they're starting up, what, what can they get? Because you can flavor them just about any sort of um, style. Recently, they've been the Titan Forge. Is that their name? Yep. They've had a successful run on their Chinese slash Japanese themed. Yeah, Dragon Empire. Dragon Empire. Called. Yep. So samurai, ninjas, monks, dragons. Yep. What else is there? You got the War Games miniature range as well. So extremely cheap uh, for a lot of items, uh, a lot of miniatures. So they do Romans and Celts and a, a whole heap of other range. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you've got your yeah, Games Workshop that still do uh, the traditional Empire. I have no idea what they're called now. It's probably but something silly. Probably something silly. Mm. Humans of unhuman. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think a few other night rangers around as well. Warlord do a lot of that, don't they? If you want to spend some serious coin, go hunting for Dogs of War Warhammer units. Yeah. Mm. I that's, love that's Some that's of those models much. are awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so expensive. Yeah. That uh, would be cool. I guess uh, the benefit of Kingdoms of Men is there's just you just have a search of 28 millimeter human, and uh, you get a whole heap of people that have only ever done one or two characters, and then uh, all of a sudden you're able to have that's a hero. But uh, mm. the units, I guess, is a little bit more complex because you want a bit of a range or mm. modeling ability. So yeah. Sort of similar. Yeah. yeah, can't say I've ever done much research on the the human miniatures. Sorry, right, Sally. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's fine, mate. All right, final thoughts. They're all right. No, thanks. I'll be all right. I'll give me monsters. <laughs> Not for me. They're Salix. Yeah. Toys. Oh, I'll tell them you what. For you. Silence. Uh, so, <laughs> for me... <laughs> no, for me, it's, it's an army that you can play... As long as you like humans, and I know that sounds a bit lame, but uh, I don't like many humans, but I like playing with humans. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is getting... Uh, this, we're going to have to bump the rating up to MA. Um, but uh, for me, you can play all these different types of styles. You can have a heavy shooting army, you can have a heavy uh, mounted army, a heavy artillery or war engine army. Everything is actually possible with this list, and it is actually... It's quite competitive in either of those fashions. Um, you can't apart have from a hero, heavy hero monster w list. Yeah, you can't have a heavy monster list. <laughs> um, well, you probably could, but uh, you're going to have to heavily ally it. But for me, it, it's one of those armies that it can be whatever you want it to be. Now let's just all uh, well look up to the sky. That's an amazing statement. It can be whatever you want it to be, people. So what was that? I kind of zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about backing the Titan Forge because I I've always liked the idea of having a an Asian theme. Like I really wanted um, G Dub to re release their Cathayan uh, yeah army, but it was only just in in story and background, and nothing ever ever came of it. So I want samurai, and I want um, Chinese, Chinese and Japanese mythological creatures in my armies, but it's just not happening. <laughs> Yeah, so for everyone else that doesn't know about the old old world sort of theme, there was a it was a city, wasn't it? There was Cathay. It's like an entire region. So you, you've got your G Dub map. Imagine that as Mantica, and then off to the the east, you've got these mountain ranges, and then some plains where the ogres sit, and then this entire rest of the world that they've drawn, which is essentially China and Japan, but they did nothing with it. Mm, waste. It just sat there, empty. Ridiculous. I do believe it was uh, two years in a row that they used it as a um, July 1 sort of gag. April Fool's. April Fool's. That, there we go. July 1? <laughs> what? <the>? April 1. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long night, people. <laughs> yeah, the uh, April Fool's gag, they used it that they were actually going to be bringing that out. And I was actually pumped. So I'd saved a whole heap of money up when I was like 20 or so, but it just never came to fruition. Yeah. All right. That's it. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening once more. Um, if you've got any thoughts or suggestions yourself, if you want to tell me why I'm wrong about certain things, please go ahead. I would like to hear it. And I guess we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye. As a whole, men have a somewhat ambivalent relationship with the other speaking races of Mantica. Several states have very close ties with the elves, the Philentikans in particular, with two great elven cities actually being part of it, and elven quarters in every other city besides. Dwarfs lives throughout man's land, descendants of refugees from the fall of the Northern Hold, and, more recently, 
King Golok's reign. The northern tribes sometimes made common cause with the Yorks or the Abyssal Dwarves, or else forced to fight for them as slaves. The great alliances of the past may be fading memories. Men are as likely to fight shoulder to shoulder with the Elves and Dwarves as they are to oppose them, and on many occasions men have fought on both sides of the battle in these grand alliances. Men, however, most often fight other men, whether through greed or hatred or honor or just through misunderstanding. Men are hot-blooded and not always wise. Their vivacity is a curse as much as it is a blessing. Yeah, direct misfire blowing up the game. Talking many war games is our aim. From rule books to advice, we cover it all With the best tactics, we never fall Been summoned, spoon all your host every vid Misfiring, but aiming up ahead Comment, like, and subscribe today Keeping you notified and up to date Come check us out at facebook.com slash directmisfire Or shoot us over an email at directmisfire at gmail.com